I'm going to start recording here. Okay, Angelina is here. Welcome, Angelina. Right, so I think we're good to go. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Grade 7 Coding. It is the 9th of July today, over here where I am in the beautiful garden route. We are having massive storms. Yesterday it was wind. Today we have rain. So we went from extremely hot weather due to the mountain winds to extremely cold weather due to the rain today. So it's a very interesting time that we are in. However, how fortunate are we to have lessons in the comfort of our own homes? We don't even have to travel in the rain to go to school. So I think we are very blessed and we have a lot to be grateful for. That being said, let's get going. So if you're watching the YouTube video, please head down to the video description. You will find links there that will lead you to our registration page. And that is going to allow you to register if you have access to an email. If you do not, then you can ask a parent to register on your behalf. And then you will receive the links that will guide you to these lessons. We do require registrations just because we want to try and keep everything as safe as possible in this online space that we are working on. That being said, if you do find your way over to our lesson here, then I just need to tell you that although you will have access to the chat box, and this is now for the students that are in the class at the moment as well, please keep the chat relevant to what we are doing on the screen. Please do not post any links. It's very difficult for me to understand whether it's a clean link or a masked link. There's no way that I can test it while I'm in a lesson. And there's no way for me to remove any chats that have been posted. So if we have a link in there, which in the IT industry we refer to as a dirty link, something that is malicious, we have to stop the entire lesson just to get that um, so that that doesn't spread to other people's devices, okay? So please, please, please just adhere to that. And then the last question or request from me is to please keep your video feeds turned off the moment you switch it on. I cannot see the content on my screen. I'm lying, there's one more request. Please have fun, coding is fun. I love computer science. I'm completely passionate about that and the entire IT sphere as a, as a whole the information technology industry. And I would love to not only empower you to know how to write computer code on the system, but also to have a passion for technology because it is going to be a major part of your lives moving forward. It is already a major part of your life, even if you see it or not, okay? So all of that being said, I think we can get going. So we are looking at functions in the harvester. And the years are quote from Bill Gates again, learning to write programs stretches your mind and helps you think better, creates a way of thinking about things that I think is helpful in all domains. And that is from Bill Gates. He is the co-founder of Microsoft. So obviously he has applied this way of thinking to many more things than just computer coding. And he has made a great deal of success with that same mindset or mentality. So this is the one thing that I want you guys to understand clearly when it comes to coding. Yes, we need the knowledge of how the code functions and how it gets put together. Yes, we need to have an understanding of the technology and how the computer works and all of those things. But at the core, writing good programs or writing programs in a good way is a matter of mindset, how you approach the task and how you execute the task and how you think about that. If you do it in a clear, logical way, it makes the program run better, first of all. And secondly, it makes it so that if a future programmer needs to work on your program or you're working in a team with somebody else, it just makes all of that so much easier and smoother. So that being said, here are a few things that we need to understand. The first one is functions. So we are obviously working with functions. We are going to continue with functions into our next lesson as well, which I hope to get started today. So <clears throat> Jesse is also now with us. Welcome. So function is a sequence of code that performs a task or calculates a value. Okay. So you will see later on, I'm not sure if we will have an exercise like that, but we are going to be looking at variables where we assign certain values to certain things. And we can have a constant variable where we have that 
value assigned constantly or we can have a non-constant variable where the variable changes as the program needs it to happen. Now, <clears throat> if we have a look at this, you can even use the function to calculate the value of the variable, okay? So if that doesn't make sense now, don't worry about that. You will see it in our lessons moving forward, but I just wanted to make mention of that uh, just to avoid that confusion there. For us at the most part, at the most foundational basic level, we are using at the moment functions to perform certain tasks, okay? So that is what we are using it for because we are looking at the object tracking logical reasoning behind coding, okay? Now, the other one that we have to look at is conditionals. If then logic statements that changes the way the code is executed. So what that means is we take a statement or a sequence like we have here at the top, all right? Now, we've spoken about sequence and statements before. We take that and we apply that to a program then it will not take into account any parameters or restrictions that we have. It will try to execute that statement or, or that sequence, right? So I, I use the example of move forward and turn left. If we place that onto one of our puzzles, then the code will try to run the move forward and the turn left, irrelevant of what you see on the actual play area. So there might be something in the way which causes that the character cannot move in that way but the code will still try to execute it. Now, when we enter a conditional, we can now have a situation where we tell the code, before you decide to move forward, we want you to check whether there is a path for you to move forward to, okay? So we can say, if path ahead, then we want you to move forward. We can also say, if path ahead, move forward, else do something else. So if we know that, as an example in the harvester we have a pumpkin right at the end of the path we can say if path move forward if path ahead move forward if there isn't a path ahead anymore so else then we want you to harvest the pumpkin right so that is just a very basic explanation of these two ideas or concepts but you will see them in a more practical way on the platform where we are coding okay so let me just jump onto that quickly here we have functions in the harvester puzzle 12 to 14. I gave you puzzle 12 as homework, I think, or 13. I am going to review one puzzle here just to make sure that we have that. Now, this is our next lesson, functions in the artist. Now, I don't think that we will only reach this by Monday. I think we will have time today to even start looking at that. So let me just jump to my coding screen where I have access to the link that I can share with you. This is the section that you are on. And let me just check. Puzzle 13 was on. Good. So we will review puzzle 12, obviously. And then we will look at puzzle 13's solution. The reason why I want to review puzzle 12 is because some of the YouTube viewers might be watching puzzle 12 as their first lesson. And some of these ideas are being repeated in the next puzzle. Okay. So here they tell us, let me just share the link to you quickly. And thank you so much, Jesse. I receive your homework on email every day. So a big shout out to you. Thank you for sharing it with me. I love to see the way that you approach these situations and how you use the skills that you have to find solutions for these things. And for anyone else that sends homework, I don't necessarily have your correct names in this chat or in this group or on the email. So if you do send homework, I try to reply to them all and say, thank you, I did receive them. If I don't, just know a shout out to everyone that submits it to me. Okay, so here we have a challenge and it says, use everything that you've learned so far to solve this puzzle in 19 blocks or less. So this is the solution we came up with yesterday. I'm not going to discuss it again. I am, how, I'm not going to create it again. We are going to, however, discuss it quickly. So we started off without anything here, just creating our first function where we said, check the square for corn. I don't know if we created it or if it was given to us. Okay, it looks like we created it because we can remove it. So what that says is, each time this artist is going to stand on a square and we have this function called, she is going, not artist, harvester, she is going to check that square for corn because we have one, two, three sprouts here. We don't know whether there is corn under that or not. 
okay? But what this is also going to do is, depending on how we call the function, she might check for corn on every block that she gets to. That is, the at the end, how we coded it. But we tested it beforehand to make sure that if we tell her to check for corn on a block where there's nothing or on a space where there's nothing, we do not receive any errors, right? If you remember when we programmed the collector, if we tell her to collect on a block where there's nothing, then it gives us an error. But with this, we saw that doesn't happen. Okay, so we created that function and it became available here for us to choose from. Then we had the ne next function that we created. Yes, we did create that one. And we said this is called pick along the path. Now, we also, just before I move on to this, remember when we say check square for corn, we're not only checking to see if there is corn or not. We are also telling the code that if there is corn, we want you to do something. We want you to pick that corn, okay? So then we created this other function here. So we had this get all pumpkins function, which was obviously down here. I'm just going to move that up so that we can see it more clearly. Also created by us. So this one says, while there are pumpkins, pick pumpkins. Okay, the reason why we said this, while there are and not just if there is, is because that we know there are pumpkins. So these that have question marks, there will be pumpkins there, but we don't know how many. Okay, so if you say while there are something and you try to pick that and it is on an empty block. So let's say we have, I'm going to test this and show you what I mean. If we say while there is corn, we want you to pick corn, then we run this. You'll see it is going to give us an error saying, make sure you don't leave any crops behind, okay? So we need to understand how these different conditional repeats work, the conditional loops. So this is saying while there are pumpkins, meaning that there will be pumpkins, we want you to pick those pumpkins. So it's going to depend on how many over here. We will obviously pick three. Over there, we'll only pick two. Up there, we'll only, we will pick five, okay. So then what we did is we created one function incorporating both the other functions. So you can see we have a function and a conditional repeat inside a function. This is creating a sequence for us. So what we can see here is it says, Repeat until there are pumpkins. So we want to do this until we are on a block that has a pumpkin, right? Then we want to check the square for corn and we want to move forward. So every time we're moving forward, we're checking the square for corn as well. Once, they, once the harvester is standing on a pumpkin, this repeat will reign true. So this condition would have been met. So it will no longer execute. It is going to move on to the next statement of code that we have the line of code or in our case block of code and this is going to then tell the harvester to collect all the pumpkins on that block so after we have defined all our functions we put them together into one function that we will actually use in our code then we started testing the pick along path function to see whether it works we saw that it works then we said, okay, after you've picked along the path, we want you to turn right. So she's going to move here. She's going to harvest everything because remember, the pick along the path function has the corn and the pumpkins function embedded into it. So it is going to, if there were any corn here, she would have picked the corn and she's going to pick the pumpkin. So after that's happened, we want her to turn right. Okay, so she's going to do this four times to complete an entire square. That last turn right is going to place it there facing towards this way. Then we added another turn right to send it down here. And we created another loop there by putting this into another loop. We call this a nested loop. And now that she's going to from there, because we have the pick along the path function, walk all the way down, harvest everything on the way until there isn't a long the a path anymore. So until she is on a pumpkin and then she's going to pick that and turn. So let's run this code. Okay, so there she picked the first square. She turns around, she's moving around that way. And now the way we created the pick along path function, we can see that we can harvest different lengths of path as well. 
Right, so now we are ready and good to go. I'm so glad to see some of you here. Yesterday you unfortunately missed, but I'm very happy to see you here. Safiso, yes, I see you're late, but that's awesome. I'm very, very glad that you are here. If you are late and you have the ability to, you can catch the videos on YouTube that you might have missed. Are you all comfortable with this? Can we continue on to puzzle number 13? Okay. This veggie is unknown. It changes each time you run the program. So now we can see that it is possibly going to be a piece of corn like that, a cob of corn. And if we run it again, there you see there's nothing, right? So we can see each time that we have one of those sprouts, it's either going to be one corn or it will be nothing. Okay, so you can see that change. So we need to find a way again to check before we decide to harvest. So here we can see we have that function created already. If there is corn, pick the corn, right? Then we have this repeat until there are pumpkins, pick along the path. So this one is saying check for corn and we want you to move forward, right? So when we pick along the path, we can test this. It's not going to show us much because we cannot continue there, but you can see that it's working, right? And you can see by looking at the yellow running in the function, we are actually checking for corn. It doesn't highlight this one because it highlights these, the actual actions happening in that function. And then it jumps back to the move forward, okay? So now what we need to do is we need to also have a way to get the lettuces. So we're going to start by placing a loop and say, while there is lettuce, we want you to pick lettuce, okay? And we can drop that into a function of our own and we can call this the pick lettuce function. Oh, look at that typing. That's not even better yet. Allow me to fix that. There we go, that's better. So we have a function now that's going to pick lettuce and we can see that that function is here. Now we're not necessarily going to leave this function the way it is. We're first going to test and then have a look. So what we want to do here is obviously move forward, turn right, move forward. So we can do that, move forward and turn right and move forward. Now, if you have a faster, better way of creating this code, please, please go ahead and do that. I'm explaining it in a way that accommodates all of our viewers and all of our students, okay? So if this is something, you see me doing something that's not going to work now, I'm trying to explain not only the code, but also the process of creating the code. Right, so we can, run that then we'll see okay she's going to end up there now we have two options either we can make her turn right and then pick the lettuce or we can make her pick the lettuce and then turn right it's not going to matter i made a mistake there that should be left not right okay so we can either do this you can see it's still going to work right and this one does there so what I actually want to do is, this one needs to stay, okay? So what I really, really, really want to do is to create another function. Now we might be removing some functions, so that's okay. So we're going to call these the lettuce stairs, just because that makes sense. Right. And then we can see that this is obviously going to work. So if we drop that function in there, lettuce stairs, you see that works, right? But now we have two functions here. So what I would like to do is rather take this function out and just place this loop in there. And then we don't have that function, right? So now we have only this one function and we're saving on block space. So if we run this again, you'll see 
it works. Okay, awesome. So obviously the lettuce, there's, there are two of them. Then after we've done that square, there's going to be two of them again. So we can just repeat that twice. So we can either put the repeat in here and do it twice. Okay. So that's going to do that two times. Awesome. Or if we knew that we have one letter stay here, but two down here or two up here and one there, then we could have used the repeat up here. So that the first time we call this function, we're repeating it twice, but perhaps the second time we only want to repeat it once. So it's going to depend on what the puzzle is expecting of us. For now, we can just drop it in here because for this puzzle, it's obviously going to work. Okay, so now that we've done this, we have that. So what we want to do now is to add this pick along path function which is going to say, oh, come on. Repeat until there are pumpkins. So we don't want to repeat until there are pumpkins because there are no pumpkins on you. So we need to set this until there, are, there is corn. Now, if we run this, you'll see she's going to walk forward and once there's corn, she is supposed to pick that corn. Why is she not picking that? Oh, the moment that she's on corn, it actually stops this from running. So we just need to think through this again, one more time. So instead of using the function, let's just test it in the sequence and see what other, aha, this one I think we will be able to use. So let's run this. Again, she's not picking that there. Now we cannot just place the pick corn right at the end because what that is going to create for us is a problem of this one here is obviously in the center. So we just need to figure out which conditional is going to work for us. So let us first just test that. So obviously this first section is fine. We're just going to place this here and pick along path can go out and we're just going to say first problem right so that obviously works now we want to create the solution for the second problem now just so you know i have the solution for that right i'm just playing around here to show you the way that i found that solution so that if you are ever coding and I'm not there to guide you, you can figure it out with me. So what, what I hope you've saw was me testing different things in that process. Okay. So the check for corn function is obviously going to work. If there is corn, we're going to check for corn, right? So now what we need to do is we obviously need to find a way to move forward. So this function is good and this function is good. We're not going to touch that again. We want to create yet another function that's going to give us the ability to move forward and collect corn when we want to. So now we just need to figure out what we are going to do or use to do that. So we want to say until there is corn and then we can start testing our different loops. So while there is corn, we obviously want to move forward until that. And while there is corn, we want to pick the corn. So let's see if this one works for us. There we go. Okay. So we obviously need to also add a turn in there, turn left. Let's test that. No, 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 no. It's going to happen afterwards. The problem that we have here is she, she continues to want to move forward there, right? 
So if you have a solution for this, you're welcome to type it into the chat box because you need to help me brainstorm ideas here. Okay, so what we have now is at least a way to get to where we want to be. Now we're testing another loop. And that one works because you can see once there isn't a path ahead anymore, she turns left. Okay, so we've run through a couple of them at, the, at this stage. So what we want to do now is to create that function that's going to say, harvest path, if you want to call it that. You can mention or label it however you want to do that. Let's see how that works for us. Okay, so that obviously works. But now we want to do that one, two, three times. And then down there, so it's four times. So let's loop this four times and see how that works. Now, then we good to go. Is we can use we have. Right, I think we can continue. Okay, so this one is our last puzzle for here. Let us quickly talk on that. So this is saying, look at the functions defined below. What will the harvester pick? So before we can even start reading these things, we need to look at the functions, right? So what we have here is, oh, we cannot move them, so we can just scroll down. We have a check square for corn function, which is saying if there is corn, pick corn. Okay, that's easy to understand. Then we have a pumpkin square, which will repeat four times, a pick along a path and turn right. So before we can understand this one, we need to understand what this function means. And there it is. So this function is saying that if we have the pick along path function, we are going to repeat until there are pumpkins. We will check for corn and we will move forward. And then we say get all pumpkins. Right, so this is moving forward after that. Then we have two turn right. And then we have a get produce. So the get produce looks like this. Repeat until there are lettuce, move forward. Right. So what we have here is while path ahead, move and check for corn, move and check for corn, turn right, turn right and get produce. So get produce was pick lettuce. So let's talk through this while path ahead. So there's a path ahead this way. Ahead means in front of her. So she's going to pick along the path on every block moving this way. 
And this one is saying, get all pumpkins. So let's see. The harvester will pick two pumpkins. The harvester will pick all of the pumpkins. The harvester will pick the lettuce. The harvester will pick the corn. So in my opinion, C is the best answer. There we go. So are you happy with that? Can we continue? Okay, so these bonus, bonus puzzles we're not going to get into now, right? What I do want to get into is this next lesson because I want to start moving into variables. But we have to finish functions first. So this is saying functions in the artist, lesson 18. So we have a few puzzles there. So what will happen when you press run? Nothing, the function is not called in the program. So here we have a function, draw a square, and there it's called in the program twice. The artist will draw a single, oh, I see I have this. I can't restart this, so I already have the answer on this. Sorry about that. The artist will draw a single square. Uh, if you look at this, it might be possible. Then C says the artist will draw two squares that overlap. And D says the artist will draw two squares with a small, small gap in between them. So the answer I have on here is wrong. Okay. So what we have to look at is this, this repeat four is going to draw a square that is 100 and it has 90 degree turns. So it's four sides of 100 uh, pixels on here. Okay, so because this is 100 pixels and this is jump backwards by 175, it looks to me like we will have a small gap in there, D. I'm going to run this because I chose C. There we go. So you can see the actual answer, you can test that on your side, is D. Okay, so you're all happy with that, good. I see the yeses in the chat box. I'm going to share this with you. Right, so what we have here is here's a function called draw square. Use it to complete this drawing. The squares are 75 pixels apart. So that line there is 75 pixels, right? They don't give us any other details on the size of the square, but they do give us a function. So we can test that function immediately and see that it works. So now we obviously have to move after we've drawn the first square from here to there so that we can draw the second square. But while we are passing there, we might as well draw this one. So we have this draw square. Now what we have to do is add another move forward. So if he's moving 100 on that line, he's going to move 75 on that line. So when we add those together, it gives us 175. And then we can add another draw square. Is that easy enough? Can we move on? Okay.
Okay, so what we have to do is we need to draw that star. They gave us the function, but the function is empty, right? And we cannot select functions there. So we have to define this function. So each arm of the star is 25 pixels long. You need to turn 45 degrees to get them, to get eight arms. And it's okay to go forward and backward over the same line. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by moving forward 25 lines. I'm lying 25 pixels. Let's test that, great. So now what we want to do is turn right. How many degrees did they say up here? 45 degrees. Okay, and after that we want to jump back with 25 so that we're back in the center. Well, this is also a way you can do it. You can jump back and then draw the line if you'd like to. Okay, doesn't matter. So we're going to loop this. Oh, we need to loop it here. It doesn't allow us to loop the function six times. There we go. I'm lying eight times. Sorry about that. run it and test and there we have our star drawn okay so now we have to do oh let me just take this out so we need to define the function to draw a star okay we've just done that it was a move forward and a turn and then we want to repeat that not only repeat it but also come back to actually we can't use this here because we only have one so we want to jump backwards by 25 Oh, you need to add the function onto the code before you can test it. And this then we want to repeat eight times. There we go. I just want to see something here. No, we're using too many loops. but we want to define the draw star. Okay, so let's just think quickly here. That's telling us that the jump over the moon is 200 pixels long. Uh, we can use this inside, yes. Do it this way. We draw the star. Then we're going to jump over the moon 200 pixels. Then we want to draw the star again, so we can test that. And then we want to jump to our next star and we want to draw that star. I wanted to do these in a repeat, but it won't be able because we have different distances that we have to cover. Okay. This is a fun one. And that is going to be our homework for Monday. Again, you can share it with me on email if you'd like. So we have now puzzle five, not completely done this yet. This is your homework. So for Monday, we are obviously going to continue five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. Have an awesome day. You can mail your projects to me here. You can find us on these social media platforms searching for that. And then I want to tell you to have an awesome weekend. And I'll see you guys on Monday. Thank you and bye-bye.